Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Dr. Hampton, a board certified family and obesity medicine doctor with additional training in nutrition and functional medicine. I'm sitting in my car getting ready to have a great day at clinic and I thought about a patient who I talked to yesterday at the end of the day and they had a very interesting question and I thought about it because I was driving home and it came to my brain. I said, you know what, this would be a good time to share a brief video. And the question was, doctor, I've heard that people with normal LDL cholesterol, which is the so-called bad cholesterol, uh, have just as um, high a risk for a heart attack as people with high LDL cholesterol. And I, I told them immediately, yes, that's true. In my training, I've learned as I've looked at studies that yes, you can have an exact uh, risk of heart attack that's the same as rather as high or low. And that does. So why do we spend so much time focused on you got to reduce your cholesterol, you got to reduce your cholesterol if the risk is the exact same. And so it was a great question. And I thought this would be a good time to talk about it. And again, as I drove uh, to work this morning, I was able to noticed there were potholes, right? And I thought about the fact that, well, where did the potholes come from on the streets? And again, in Chicago, to make the roads safe, we have to put salt on the roads to make sure there's no ice so we can drive home safely. So, and I thought about it and I realized that, you know what? If it wasn't for the salt, the, the cars wouldn't get stuck. And the cars which are transporting us to work would get to their destination with no problem if it wasn't for the stock cause of potholes, right? And then I said, well, you know what? I said to the patient, you know what? Let's, let's compare that to what happens with your LDL cholesterol. Now, LDL is not really a cholesterol, it's a lipoprotein, it's a carrier. Just like your car carries you, the LDL particle or lipoprotein carries the cholesterol. Why do we want to carry cholesterol around? Well, um, it has value, like you have value in your family. Um, we want to get you to your destination. Um, the cholesterol that's being carried around has functions, right? One is that it helps with the production of bile. Um, and bile is very important because it's used to help you digest your food. So that's number one. Number two, um, if you're a man, you need testosterone, and we both need testosterone, men and women. And if you're a woman, you need estrogen. So guess what? The cholesterol is important in the production of your hormones. So you definitely want cholesterol for that purpose. And lastly, you want to think about the thing that we're not as aware of is that you need cholesterol for your cell walls to protect and make your cell walls healthy. And that's including the cell walls of your vascular system, your arteries. And of course, we want those to be healthy because if our arteries are not healthy, then we're going to have clogged arteries that can then lead to a heart attack, etc. So, so cholesterol, although the LDL cholesterol is always perceived as this bad thing, it's actually a good thing. We just don't want it to get stuck. So, so the question is, if the LDL is traveling just like your car down your vascular wall, right, trying to get to the destination while doing minor repair work along the way, well, what would make it get stuck? And the answer is, and you may already know the answer to this, it's excessive glucose in your body. Now, we know that diabetics and borderline diabetics do not metabolize carbs and glucose very well, so they tend to have a higher level. And that's why people who are diabetic, believe it or not, have the exact risk of having a heart attack as a person who has already had a heart attack. That's why so many diabetics are advised to be put on medications like statins to reduce their risk. But the real issue is, should we be so focused on the cholesterol in the first place? And what I do in my clinical practice, we try to reverse the diabetes, particularly we're talking about type 2 diabetes. And if we reverse the diabetes, then we can get rid of that, that risk of cardiovascular disease. So, so, so again, we have all of this extra sugar floating around, and there's something called uh, like you know, advanced glycation in products, and when you have you know um, inflammation occurring because you add the the LDL particle interacts with the glucose, and next thing you know, there's inflammation, oxidative stress, and essentially, the inflammation in your in your arterial walls, just like on the roads of Chicago, uh, which gets affected by salt, 
our blood vessels are impacted by too much glucose. So too much glucose, oxidative stress, inflammation, and guess what? Our cholesterol, which is supposed to be uh, going on to do other things, gets stuck in our arterial walls. And when they get stuck, more inflammation, that builds up, and now all of a sudden you have a clogged artery over time. So, so, so the key is not to just focus on cholesterol, LDL per se, which is what the mainstream does. We need to focus on the root cause, which is let's not have all this extra glucose floating around in our blood. Because guess what? If we cause inflammation, oxidative stress, and plaque buildup in our um, arteries, our arteries are all over our body. So we're not just talking about a heart attack. We're talking about the risk for a stroke because you have arteries in your brain, the risk for kidney damage, which is why diabetes leads to, it's the number one cause of needing dialysis. You have retinal arteries. They are arteries that can also get irritated and you get uh, diabetic retinopathy, which will then increase your risk for um, uh, blindness. Um, so these are all things that are, it's almost like the same disease for everything. So that's why as a metabolic health focused doctor, I really think it's important that we focus on the root cause. And that's why I'm a huge fan of carb restriction, reducing inflammation, and that'll prevent us from having the risk of cardiovascular disease. The good news is if you reverse the type two diabetes, you get all this extra carb at your life, guess what? You can now get off medicine. And if you're not diabetic, then the doctor may not be asking you to take a medicine like a statin if you don't have that risk anymore because you've gotten rid of your diabetes. So I think this is a very important message for anybody out there who relies on medicine as the only answer. Do I take, put patients on medicines in the short term while they're diabetic and they're at risk? Absolutely. Uh, but I also have other ways to mitigate that. And one of those things is uh, the best test to determine if you're at risk for a heart attack is not your cholesterol level. It's actually doing a coronary artery calcium score test. And that's a test that you know kind of measures how much plaques, uh, how much calcium do you have in your arterial walls. And in, in that test, if negative, if it's a zero, then the American Heart Association as of March of 2022 is saying there may not be any need to take a statin. But again, these are things that are new. So it's gonna take a while before your doctor catches up with the new information. So, so in the meantime, let's focus on the lifestyle changes. Let's restrict carbs, let's exercise, let's get enough sleep, let's reduce stress, let's do all of those things. And if we do those things, we will start to heal metabolically. So I hope this video provided clarity. I thank my patient for asking an insightful question, a question that was uh, right. And I just wanted to help you understand why some people with a low and a high LDL end up with uh, heart disease. It's mainly because of the inflammation that leads to uh, the uh, accumulation of plaque that would have otherwise not occurred. So, so if you like this video, like, subscribe, share, and until we get to the next video, be safe, be well, and continue to protect your nest. Thank you guys.